Hello and welcome to this edition of Extension Ed Talks. I am Erin Peter Sully from the Walnut Creek District. And I'm Anna Schremer from the Phillips Ricks Extension District based here in Phillipsburg. And today we are talking about bread and specifically getting down to some of those bread basics, hoping that it's not as intimidating to you and so that all of you become br great bread bakers. Yes, uh, bread baking sometimes is thought. Uh, it's really difficult, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully when we finish today, uh, you'll find that it is uh, very easy, uh, simple. There's a lot of ways you can take a recipe and come out with great products. Uh, one of the first things we do want to mention, though, that we do not endorse any uh, brand of flour. This just happens to be what our two grocery stores have, and so that's uh, why we have these different kinds of flour here. Okay, so we started off saying that we didn't want to intimidate you, and then we lined up a bunch of flowers <laughs> with you. So let's, yes. start, let's start off with flour and some of the different types that you have and some of the different options mm -hmm. that you have. Because when it gets down to it, bread baking can not only be therapeutic for you, as um, I definitely mm -hmm. find it as a therapeutic yes. sort of thing, but as in a way to make it healthy and an economical mm -hmm. way for you to help stretch your food dollar. So mm -hmm. let's talk about yes. flowers. Okay. Uh, do you want to start? Go ahead. Um, well, I was going to say, it does, so we mm -hmm. put lots of different things out in front of you, and probably the most common thing that you will find in your grocery store or that you're the most familiar with is all-purpose flour, meaning it is just for that, all sorts of purposes, whether you are making cake, whether you are making a banana bread, or whether or not you are making um, bread, perfectly fine for bread. Then we start getting into these different flours, and if you start talking about, I'll try and grab a <laughs> what, <laughs> what we have, because one of the first things I was trying to find the, well, I guess let's talk self-rising flour. Okay. Yeah. Self-rising flour uh, has already has the leavening agent in it, and we'll be talking a little bit more about a leavening agent, specifically yeast, after we finish with the flour. But self-rising flour has your baking powder, soda, and salt already mixed in. So it can only be specifically used for uh, recipes that call for self-rising, uh, such as biscuits, pancakes, uh, muffins, uh, and usually on the back of the package it has recipes if you don't have anything. Uh, it's kind of like a bisquick, only it doesn't have the fat in it. You would have to add your fat to it. So that's self-rising flour. So great flour, used for lots of different things, just not what we're going to use for today. Correct. Okay, so then we get into, let's talk about, there's a bread flour that they make and and they're also and then they're just their regular flour. Mm -hmm. um, but talk to us specifically, they both say short patent on it. Right, that's uh, the type of wheat uh, that they used for the uh, flour. Uh, in making flour and they do test to test the protein content in it. And the higher the protein content in it, the better gluten that you're going to have, the better bread you're going to have. So uh, that's why uh, they recommend that you use either all-purpose or bread flour when making bread. Now, if you're using a bread machine, they really highly recommend you use the bread flour because bread flour has a higher uh, protein content in it. Okay, so with that bread flour, we're going to that higher gluten. So that's actually coming from that hard red, or hard red winter wheat, wheat that we yes. are all growing around Kansas. So all of that wheat that you see around Kansas, that is what is going into making this bread flour. It will also be mixed with other flours to make an all-purpose flour like we have over here. Um, but it's what gives us that superior product when we are talking bread flour, which is the same as... Well, we've got whole wheat flour, but and this one specifically talks about how it has a 14% um, protein content mm -hmm. in it so that it makes okay. a great bread flour. Um, so talking that, let's talk about whole wheat flour here for just a little bit. Okay, uh, there's actually two kinds of whole wheat flour that you can purchase. Uh, Aaron talked about it's a hard red winter wheat, and that's what Kansas grows the most. But we also grow hard white winter wheat and <laughs> it's a tongue twister right and so uh, the whole white winter wheat I really like to work 
uh, and cook with, especially if there's kids around, because they have a tendency to turn their nose up mm -hmm. at the hard red winter wheat because it's a different color. It tastes, has just a little different taste. And so uh, the white whole wheat flour does not have that. It's a lighter color. Kids usually will not even know, or anybody that doesn't think they like uh, whole grain or whole wheat uh, products, uh, whole white winter wheat usually fools them. Uh, but it still has the nutritional content of the hard red winter wheat. Uh, so that is uh, something that if you have a, a finicky family, Choose your uh, hard white winter wheat. <clears throat> right, and and like you said, that nutritional value, still mm -hmm. getting that whole grain that we need in there, right. and being able that to fool fiber. them just a little. Yeah, yes. that's fiber. The just fiber is really important in there. Yes. Um, okay, so we've talked about these just a little bit. So most of your recipes are going to be written for a bread flour or an all-purpose sort of um, flour, unless they specifically say whole wheat or rye right. or mm -hmm. you know any of those other whole grains. So can we use these interchangeably? If my recipe calls for all purpose or traditional bread flour, can mm -hmm. I just substitute this whole wheat because mm -hmm. I know it's healthier for me? Actually, you can. There are a few things you need to tweak. Most of the time they recommend not to go more than 50-50 and you can keep the same recipe. Uh, so let's say uh, the recipe that I have calls for seven to 10 cups of flour, all purpose flour or, or bread flour. <clears throat> you can uh, figure up to four cups, excuse me, my, I don't know what's wrong there. Uh, four cups of, of whole wheat flour to go with your uh, all purpose flour. Uh, and you don't have to change your recipe at all. If you wanna go 100% whole wheat flour, then you need to uh, add about a fourth of a cup more water or uh, liquid to it. And in fact, sometimes they recommend orange juice because orange juice will take that kind of, it's not a bitter flavor, but that um, f uh, flavor of the whole wheat and kind of cut that back where it tastes more natural. So uh, you can add a fourth cup of orange juice and then after, before you do the first knead or the kneading of it, let it sit for about 20 minutes because the fiber that is in the uh, whole wheat flours needs to go ahead and absorb that liquid. Okay, so we've got, given you the basics when it comes to flour. When we come back from the commercial break, we are going to touch on yeast and then we will actually get started in making that first batch of bread with a very simple recipe. So join us back after commercial and learn to the next step to making great bread. Get total freedom from archaic phones with the Next Tech Cloud Phone. Take your calls how and whenever you want. In the office, on the go, on vacation, in the car, in between all of those places, you can make the call. So check it out. And when you sign up for a qualifying Next Tech Cloud Phone contract, you also get some great technology free, like a 55-inch Fire TV, three months of Next Tech TV Now, and a free Samsung S10e or an iPhone XR. Yep, all of it. Call and ask about a Next Tech Cloud Phone today. The team at Homestead Assisted Living is a proud supporter of the Hayes community. Located just west of the Sternberg Natural History Museum, Homestead is a warm and welcoming community where residents receive compassionate care from licensed professionals. If you're curious about senior living options for yourself or a loved one, make Homestead your first call. Our kind and courteous staff would love to show you around and answer any questions you may have. Call us today to schedule a tour of Homestead or visit us online at homesteadofhays.com. Kansas weather can be brutal on your home's exterior. A dry and watertight roof performance is a result of choosing the right contractor. At Aquashield Roofing and Construction, we use the most up-to-date products and efficient technology. We offer quality services, professional installation, and unmatched warranties, adding value to your home and providing years of trouble-free protection. Call Aquashield Roofing and Construction for a free estimate today.
Lanes Podiatry, the team's greatest joy is seeing you doing what you love to do. Dr. Rob Hens addresses all problems of the foot and ankle with leading edge capabilities. They travel extensively serving in satellite clinics near you. Their growth in southwest Nebraska is a direct result of the caring and personal treatment they give their patients. Let High Plains Podiatry bring the pep back in your step. Now seeing patients in Norton and Colby, Kansas. Call today, 877-345-3668. Welcome back to Bread Basics. So as we promised that in this section that we would actually get our hands dirty and start with some making some bread, we are going to make a very classic artisan bread that's very simple, very straightforward. And with that, we've got three cups of flour in our bowl here. And is that all-purpose bread? So I did use all-purpose, but you could change this up. If I wanted to put wheat in there, if I wanted a little bit of rye flour, even if I wanted to add some seasonings. So if I were going to make pizza crust, maybe I want some Italian seasoning in it. This Mm -hmm. is the time um, to be able to do that. We're keeping things very, very basic though this morning. So we need yeast to make this raise and we're going to use about a teaspoon of yeast. How much of yeast is in a a package, do you know? Well, that sometimes depends on which package (laughs) that you get. Um, A lot of these have a tablespoon of yeast though. Uh, Mm -hmm. Most generally when we're talking about package yeast like you have there Mm -hmm. in front of you, you are talking about a tablespoon of yeast. But there will be some slight variance between brands of Mm -hmm. yeast as well that you may not get that full tablespoon. Maybe you only get... um, And like yours, recipes call for different amounts of yeast too because of the amount of flour and such that you use. Okay, we're gonna put a little salt in here. And salt is really for that tenderness fact. Um, Typically when we're working with 4-H's, we tell you to never measure over your bowl like I'm doing because you might spill a little extra. this, can, this recipe can handle a few oopses. Okay, so flour, yeast, and salt. We are going to put approximately two cups of water in there because with bread, we need some sort of liquid. It could be milk, I mean, it could be all sorts mm-hmm. of things depending on your, and this is just really straight out of the tap water. It's not hot, so it's not gonna kill our yeast. It's not cold, it's just very tepid. And with this recipe, this is going to be very slow rising, okay? Mm -hmm. So we are just gonna mix this up and it's going to call for it to make a shaggy dough. This is one of those things that maybe the night before I put all my ingredients in except for my water. And then in the next morning, I remember to put my water in and I stir this up really quick and we're just making that really shaggy dough. It's really, it's really soggy. That's okay. And I'm going to put plastic over it and that night when I come home, it will have raised. Mm -hmm. So it just sets on the counter all day. If I wanted to use it throughout the week, I'd put it in my refrigerator and use it from there. So when I come home, this is going to have raised for us. And it's still, you can see it's very, it's kind of sticky. It's not this nice dough yet. And we're going to turn it out on a very heavily floured surface. And if I wanted to put cheese in this at this point, this is a great time if I wanted to add and make some cheese bread or some jalapeno bread, um, any of those sort of things can be added. And then I'm just going to knead. So I'm just gonna pull this. This is called a full push turn. And uh, I'm gonna ask Erin to slow it down (laughs) so you can see what she's doing. But you fold it, push it, and she's uh, pushing with the heel of her hand and then she's turning it. You can speed up now. Okay. But, You use the heel of your hand, not your fingers, because if you use your fingers, then you're gonna have dough everywhere. So the heel of your hand and keep your fingers together. And uh, Erin's going to need that uh, for a a period of time. And while she's doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about yeast. There's uh, several different kinds of yeast that uh, you can purchase. I believe she uh, used the regular uh, uh, dry, uh, active dry yeast, and you can buy it in packages, you can buy it in uh, quantity. Uh, Erin had a jar that she used, and as we already mentioned, uh, the yeast has about a tablespoon in there, so if you do buy it in quantity, and it calls for two packages of yeast, then you know you need to put two tablespoons of this yeast in. Uh, Active dry yeast uh, is proofed usually a little differently than your instant yeast, and that's another kind of yeast that uh, we have here. And again, uh, this brand of yeast is what you can buy in our grocery store, and that's why we have it. It's not any particular kind. 
I believe Erin has a different kind that she gets in her stores. So, uh, but the instant yeast will raise uh, quicker. You do not have to, if you're in a hurry, like a lot of times I am, uh, a lot of my classes that I teach, I can go ahead and we can make it. And then in 15 minutes, we've got a, a yeast that, or a bread dough that we can go ahead and shape. So uh, my, the instant yeast I use a lot of. Um, we have another kind of yeast, and it's a platinum uh, yeast, but it's an instant yeast also. But uh, on the back of this package, it says you can use it for bread machines. Now, there are certain bread machine uh, yeast that specifically yes. calls for. Yes, so when you get into making and using your bread machine, it will, a lot of those recipes will specifically say using bread machine yeast, and there is a difference with it. Um, and there's lots of different yeast out there. Mm -hmm. um, right. You know, this, honestly, I grabbed the off-brand. This is just what was at the grocery store that day, so that's what I grabbed. It works. It's just mm -hmm. fine. Um, mm -hmm. But even, I don't know, we were talking about a week ago, I was in, in the aisle in Dillon's, and there was this whole different thing of yeast that I'd never seen before, and it was mm -hmm. advertising for health benefits of adding yeast to different things. And I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I was really struggling with how to use it and all those sort of things. So it was really not for baking, mm -hmm. um, but it was there mm -hmm. as a product. Now, there's different ways to proof your yeast depending on what kind and also what your recipe calls for. Uh, if you have a recipe that calls for active dry yeast, but all you have is the instant yeast, you can change it so you can use it uh, or interchangeable. Uh, active dry yeast is usually put in with uh, warm water and uh, some sugar. Uh, and then it is, that is how it's proofed. It starts to grow and usually you let it set for 15, 20 minutes and then you add that into your, uh, with your other liquid ingredients into your uh, flour. Uh, instant yeast is proofed by mixing it in with your dry ingredients and it needs to be mixed well so your flour will coat it. That's the proofing process of instant yeast. Uh, and then you can add your liquids and such to it. But if your uh, if liquid is too hot, it will kill your yeast. If it's too cold, it will take a while to raise. But if you're setting it on your counter and letting it uh, needs to be room temperature, it doesn't make any difference. If you're in a hurry, you need to have uh, warm water. And I usually tell uh, my classes, uh, you can measure it if you have a thermometer. If you don't, I like to use the finger method. Mm -hmm. If it's too hot for my finger, it's going to kill your yeast. So uh, that's one of the things that I, it's a simple uh, it's best if you have a thermometer, especially if you have not made a lot of bread dough, but you can use the finger test too. So as we finish up with this recipe, this is going to actually cook in a lidded pot. Um, and, it, and this has to be warmed up in your oven because it is cast iron and is enamel covered. But by cooking this in a pot that's lidded, so even if it's your corningware or your Pyrex, what you are going to get is a nice crunchy loaf of bread. That's what we refer to it as our house is, is crunchy <laughs> bread. Uh, so it's going to have that nice crunchy outer um, side. Now when it does cool or once you put it into that bag, you will end up with a much softer mm -hmm. bread. But it's something that's great, it's very economical. We've got a few pennies um, into this, so we have less than a dollar into this loaf of bread that your family is going to enjoy. Okay, with that, we're going to wrap up and go to commercial break, and then when we come back, we're going to show you another method to making bread. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, and quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance and Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire Gallery Appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th Street in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. Storage Solutions is now offering premier portable buildings built locally in Greensburg and made to withstand the Kansas weather. These unique buildings can be more than just a storage shed and are as large as 16 by 40 feet. Their 30-year warranty offers flooring and walls that won't rot, splinter, or crack and are finished with a urethane paint. Multiple purchasing options are available. Visit Storage Solutions of Hayes to view models or go online to customize your building today. 
The best part of our technology doesn't come from smartphones. It comes from a powerful network, backed by infrastructure that we're always improving. We invest in this network so that you get the most from your technology. It's a network that's going anytime, anywhere, for anything and anyone. For a limited time, get a free Samsung Galaxy S10e or iPhone XR when you activate any device. Next Tech Wireless, keeping you connected. At Rogers & Associates Insurance, we serve the Midwest. We offer home, auto, commercial, and farm insurance policies and provide solid options for life and health insurance. For those unexpected life events like hail, wind, deer crashes, fender benders, and the little things in between, we can help you ensure what matters most in your life. Let us help you design a plan that meets your needs and budget. Visit us online or call us at 1-800-569-0118 to learn more. Okay, welcome back. As If you are just joining us, let me back up just a little bit. This is Bread Basics, and if you have been watching, you have seen some different things with flowers. You've seen it one way to make bread, and now we are going to go into a little bit different way of making bread. The last segment, we talked about bread that is really going to take all day to raise, and this one is going to be maybe what you're much more familiar with in taking that raise time mm -hmm. to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. um, that double mm -hmm. raise and all those sort of things. So okay. Anna, go ahead and tell us what you have and we'll get going okay. from there. Um, I'm making my favorite recipe and it's one that I got when I was in high school and I use it all the time. It's, it's refrigerator bread uh, dough. Uh, you can keep it in the refrigerator for um, up to uh, five to seven days. If you use milk, they recommend five days. If you use water, you can uh, keep it for seven days. Usually ours doesn't last that ours long. Ours doesn't last that long either. But I like making it on the holidays because I can make it the day before Christmas and then take it out and make whatever I want to do with it. And then if I don't use it all, I can have it for another day. Uh, I've already, I've kind of pre-done things to, to speed this process up. I've added my sugar. Uh, it was a cup of sugar at, and two teaspoons of salt. Uh, we learned why we need to have the salt, uh, plus also it helps control that yeast action so it just doesn't go out of control. Uh, I've added one cup of whole uh, white flour, uh, wheat flour. I'm getting my tongue twisted again on that one. And then uh, two cups of all purpose because I am making a whole wheat uh, recipe here. And so, uh, then I like using the mixer. It goes faster. I can be doing things while it's, it's uh, and it's not working. Okay, so while she's getting set up with that, okay, we'll figure it out. You don't have to use a mixer um, either. This is just one of those pieces that it's very easy for Anna to do it. I make bread like this all the time as well, and I don't use a mixer at all. Again, it goes back to that whole therapy side of things that I'm really looking at. So she's got just her dry ingredients that she is stirring just to get them incorporated. Part of that reason is she's going to go ahead and add her yeast in. And when we have those dry ingredients that we're putting the yeast in with, it's also going to help our yeast just a little bit. So if maybe the water is just a little bit on the warmer side, it will help to save it um, as well. And you want to just mix this uh, until the yeast looks like it's completely covered and your dry ingredients are mixed well. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, I'm not using my dough hook yet. I'm just using the paddle that goes with when you make uh, cakes and such. Mm -hmm. And that's the first step that uh, you use when uh, doing, uh, making it with the mixer. Uh, the next step is, um, this recipe calls for mashed potatoes. Now there's two <laughs> reasons that there's mashed potatoes in, and one of them is food for the yeast, because the mm -hmm. yeast is gonna be growing and needing to eat something for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the carbohydrate that's in the potato is what the yeast feeds off of. So that's one of the reasons. Plus it also makes us kind of a softer dough. Uh, it's a richer dough and it's used a lot. I use it for my cinnamon rolls. I mm -hmm. use it for uh, just regular rolls. Um, so we'll go ahead oh, and so I mixed it. It looks kind of <laughs> funny, but I mix the uh, mashed potatoes with my eggs and I'll, I'll you just keep dump that in. And then I've got a cup of oil. 
so as you're looking for recipes like this, um, I have a refrigerator recipe as well, and Anna and I did not duke it out, okay? We didn't go that far into whose <laughs> recipe we were going to showcase because we're both very passionate about um, our go-to recipes. Um, and mine is just a little bit different. She talked about being that richer dough if you used milk. Uh, mine is one of those milk recipes. Instead of using the oil for mine, it's going to be melted butter. Um, both of these work really well. I think probably the thing that we love the best about these recipes is that ability to freeze. Meaning, so, I mean, my recipe, like you said, you've had yours for years. Um, she beats me in terms of length of time only because she's older. Uh, but, uh, but no, I found a tab. One, I know, just a tab. But we found, uh, mine I found on a calendar from Sticky Villa. So if you guys are from the Downs area and you remember that piece of it, um, that store, it was a calendar that we found. Um, I was a second grader. Um, so have definitely used it for a long time. But when we talk about freezing recipes, because this is an economical way, we've talked all along about how economical this is, getting mm -hmm. these rolls made up and then putting them in the freezer. So if you have been to um, my wedding or my sibling's wedding, you ate Aaron's, Aaron's rolls, okay? Because that's what we did. We made them and that's um, mm -hmm. frozen ahead of time for, for weddings. And Anna, you touched just a little bit on that this was the, roll, the recipe that you use when you go to make beer ox or that you go to make the cinnamon rolls or a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. Having a good basic recipe that you are very comfortable with is going to be essential if you are going to make bread um, lots of times. And you'll find the own, its own quirks, you know, mm -hmm. that maybe you don't need exactly two and one fourth cups of liquid, that maybe in your area mm -hmm. that you're making bread, two cups of liquid, or if you're in a little bit drier area, you may have to bump that up. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, like you said, your recipe called for milk. This recipe you can use milk in if mm -hmm. you want. Uh, if you want to um, use the, I'm using instant yeast right now, you can use your dry and only instead of in the water, you would go ahead and put your yeast to proof it, like I talked mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the first step of developing the gluten, and that is beading. Uh, flour contains protein, and one of them, there's actually three proteins, but we'll just keep one, the, uh, the, <laughs> yeah, the gluten, gluten protein that produces the gluten, and that gluten is what produces the structure of your bread. So, um, and that's what I'm doing now, is I'm beading that. Okay, so... Jason, can we see the rolls here? If you, we're gonna, I'm gonna make the cameraman show us the rolls because they're gorgeous, okay? And one of the things we've probably all had a roll or a piece of bread that was really dense, that it was great maybe coming out of the oven, but as it sat on the counter longer, it didn't. So one of the things that we can tell about Anna's rolls, and they're still pretty warm, is that we can take that roll or that bread and we can push down on it. And see how it springs right back up? That tells us that when Anna made this recipe, that she had that good gluten development. So it always makes you go, oh, she's smashing that, that beautiful roll. Well, if it has good gluten development, it's not a problem. It will come right back up. Okay, with this recipe, I have changed it to the whole wheat, and I am adding the uh, four cups of white whole wheat flour, and uh, I put the three in, and I'm going to put another uh, Aaron, do you want to tell them about why it is you have a recipe that you have seven to ten cups? Okay, so there is lots of variance when we start talking about flour. And again, part of it is we've got to think weather um, in terms of what's it like outside. It's a pretty damp day. It's, we're going to have some pretty sticky dough, so it's going to take some of that um, extra flour. But let's also go back to measuring flour. You saw that Anna very gently, you know, scooped this up. She's just kind of eyeing this. One of the biggest things that we see is when measuring flour so that we get this accurate is do not press your flour down. Um, we're going to get a lot more flour into this. This is not going to be an accurate measurement at all if we start pressing it in there. Um, so just keeping it very, um, you really put loose. that in there. Oh, okay. The whole cup or yep, just keep the whole okay. cup. So when you are mixing, one of the questions is, well, how do I know when I have enough flour? And when you are using this um, as a mixer, it should start to pull away from the sides. Right. And the same way when you're mixing with by hand, it will very easily start to come. Um, mm -hmm. My grandmother's gonna roll over in her grave for this next um, comment. When you learn to make 
this with my grandmother. She would talk about, you knew that you had that right consistency when you talked about it, it was smooth like a baby's bottom. Mm -hmm. So right. everything that we have talked about today, um, we really hope that this gives you a good basis for making mm -hmm. bread, that you're maybe not so intimidated by it, but that you see the economics of it, that you see how you can really make a healthy product for your families to enjoy. And we hope that you come back with us on the next episode of Extension Ed Talks as we delve further into bread making.